Welcome back guys. I actually have a really cool video for you today. Uh, this past week I was actually taking a couple extra days off when my friend Melissa Del Toro came down and we had a girls weekend. But we ended up doing a small stream where we kind of just piloted a draft and answered a bunch of questions for Twitch chat about uh, a lot of Melissa's experience with both magic and R&D in general. So I decided to go ahead and post that up for you guys because I thought a lot of you would find it very interesting. So let's go ahead and jump into some, you know, half pay attention gameplay and some wonderful commentary from Melissa Del Toro. Fun facts are great. You guys feel free maybe to ask some questions. Don't be dicks. Don't ask things you know she can't answer. I'll low tolerance for that. But yeah, she said she's down to hang out and play some magic. Um, so we've got this guy that works really well with this deck. We have the Iron Verdict. That works well with the deck. We have one card. Well, this is more aggressive -y, boros -y aggro themed. Yeah, for sure. I'm also happy to splash this potentially in one way or another. Um, I would just spec on the removal. I would either take... The Serpent and think like Black White Splash of Red or the Iron Verdict. Yeah, like if you're playing Showdown, I like playing a lower curve generally. Which is why so. I said this guy. Yeah, and I, I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> oh, I thought you were teasing me. What would you take? What would I take? Yeah. I would take this creature. This creature over the Iron Verdict? Yeah, I think so, yeah. All right, yeah. quick. Rock, paper, scissors. Go, okay. go. Crap. Take the guy. Take the guy. Okay. <laughs> what would you take, chat? Chat doesn't know what they want. Um. Um. Anyway, I'm going to have you call the shots here. No, I, no. I don't want to draft the deck, but like, if we're just like dead what? set on playing a showdown of the Skull Zagro deck, we probably just want to take this two drop. Which two drop? This red creature. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do see that. I was I was looking for one. I couldn't see it. Yeah, it's hard to see with this mic in the way, right? Yeah. Uh, someone in the chat asked if I can talk about having Black Planeswalker removal at common, and yes, I can talk about that. Um, basically, like, we want to have more answers to powerful rares and mythics, so you'll just see adding or Planeswalker to a lot of common removal spells, you know, like, for example, a lot of red removal spells, like, we just add, instead of a uh, target creature, You'll see a lot more creature or planeswalker, you know, just because planeswalkers can be really difficult to deal with in draft, and we just want to give a little bit more answers. What are your thoughts on Divine Gambit? Uh, I think I'm more on the fence about it than most. A lot of people were saying they don't like it. I think it's fine if you just hold it till later in the game. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's great. I don't know if I would go with great. I think it's great. Hmm. Looks like I'm about to lose some. Oh, could we draft a triple run amok deck? Yeah, 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 absolutely. yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, do yeah. it. I'm gonna make sure we take like all the one and two drops though. Yeah, uh, die hard bird. He'll, that'll come back around. Okay. M maybe not, but I just want to take this run amok. It sounds fun. Hey, that's a late squash. Yeah, but look at all these red cards. You would take some of these over a squash. Um, I think Squash is great if you're playing Giants. If you're not, I think it's, like, pretty mediocre. So. Uh, agreed. Usually there's a, like, White happens to be one of the exceptions, but, you know, there's uh, so many shapeshifters that I tend to find enough. And then you've got the Cavern Hulk or whatever. Crave Hulk? I don't know what it's called. Oh, the Craven Hulk. Uh, I, I don't remember the name of it. Like Cavern Hulk? Cavern... We're talking- This oh, one! Oh, this guy. Yeah, great. <laughs> we, we didn't even know. We didn't even have to remember the name of it. But look at this Cole the Forge Master. Is this card something that we're interested in? We have to draft equipment for it to do anything. It's possible. I think I would usually not take it over this guy, just because equipment I'm on the fence about. If I fall into it, that's great, but... Yeah, this is good if you're right. You're 100 percent right if we find those cards we want. But squash. Well, now we can we can feel Hurry. better about 
Oh, you can just take the Craven Hulk. That's <laughs> that. You can do what you want. You don't want to. You don't want to rock paper scissors me. Well, I won the last rock paper scissors, oh. so I, I feel like you should uh, take this one. Okay. I, well, we'll just take turns then. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. Fight. Sure. It feels like we're open. Hmm? So someone in the chat asked a question about. Um, how do we decide what lands were sorcery and what were instant speed for the uncommon cycle? So the answer to that is it was mostly dependent on on two things. One, power level, and two, um, onboard trickiness. So if something is like a huge onboard blowout, that those types of effects tend to more be sorcery speed. Like Yep, like oh, keep talking. I'm bird. Just, I'm just making facial features as I draft while you talk. Um, like for example, the one that makes a four four angel. That one is sorcery speed because, like, forgetting about your opponent's land and then just seeing this, like, angel ambush you out of nowhere can be pretty frustrating. So how, those types of things tend to be How come the gruel one is instant? Because it's seven mana. Um, I mean, that one could be sorcery, uh, but uh, the Setley was pretty adamant about, you know, this late in the game, like, they're more likely to see it coming. But also, uh, does that token enter tapped? I don't remember. Maybe someone in the chat can answer. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I honestly don't remember. It enters untapped, okay. I took one wings, just in case we end up with more, some more of those uncommons. I don't think there's any world where we pay, play two of them, though. It's because it's a troll. <laughs> Hey, look! Trolls like to ambush, surely. Oh, great! Two drop. We love two drops in this deck. I think this is one of the ones. This is one of the ones you were suggesting over the Craven Hulk. So we got our cake and got to eat it too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whoa! This rare is cool. Redain. Yeah. This is one of the ones where I feel like the backside is very good, but I always would prefer the body over it personally. But I think most people j tend to like the backside better. Yeah, the backside is uh can be really tough to deal with, too, depending on what you're playing against. Oh yeah, this card is sweet. Christmas, Yanks, ETH, Blazin, thank you guys for the subs. Arnie Brokenbrow. I feel like this guy should be a dwarf. Yeah, I don't know. He looks what... like Dwarf King, right? Yeah, he kind of, I mean, like, he's a human, obviously, because you can tell that he's, like, a tall person, but, but yeah, like, he does have these dwarf-like features. In, like, what looks like a dwarven hall. Oh, yeah, sure, yep. Dwarves usually have, like, the red beard things. Is this just our take? Yeah, this card is great. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. It attacks for four. Base. Right? Oh! Well, if you pay the mana. Oh. That's a lot of sagas. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot of sagas. That is a strange number of them. Um, and there was a song written about Arnie Broken Brow. Are you are you familiar? I am not. Um, yeah, these uh two uh, YouTubers they uh got sponsored to do a a song about Arnie Broken Brow. It's like a Viking metal song. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's actually a really good song. It's like really good. Um, it's like these two. Uh, musicians, but they're mostly known for YouTube. Woo. Hi there. Jonathan Young is one, uh, one of the guys. Alec is the other guy. Are we interested in a potential Black Splash? Or, yeah, potentially. Or just take this Gold Maw Champion? I'm into this Black Splash. Alright. We'll start taking some, uh, There's a some fair, dual lands. fair amount of Berserkers in the red. Find in gold. Yep, this... Burja or whatever, however you say this, is also pretty cool. This double black? Ah, oh, no, forget it. I like this deck a lot. I've drafted it quite a bit, and mm -hmm. it's one. I think it's one of my favorite dual color cards. I almost always get close to decking myself, but I've never lost yeah. when I've had it out. Yep. If it's unanswered, but putting the cards in the graveyard is pretty rough and limited. We have a lot of rares already. LK, thank you for the cheer. All right, we got another giant. We got How's this giant for us? Do we have a lot of creature types in common? 
Angel Warrior. I feel like Human Berserker. I think this, like, even if this guy does two damage, I think he's still great. Yeah. We don't have a ton. But I think the only other option is, like, Verdict. Yeah. Um, this giant looks good. Works with Squash. Mm hmm And he's practically a Flame Tongue Kavu. Oh! <gasps> Oh, great. Now we're, yeah, we have the run amok deck. We have two run amoks just for you, Yanks. So the person in the chat asking, do I have any input on artists who uh, do the art? I do not. I don't do any of the art stuff at all. Like, I have. That's not true. No input on that. You're a liar. Why? I have a card with your art on it. Well, that's different. That was like from the mystery booster. <laughs> Oh, how do you feel about this dual land? This dual land, so we can play the Blood Sky Massacre. Yep, I like it. I wouldn't hate a Troll Berserker to go with our Berserker nonsense, but I think those are pretty easy to pick up. We can get another Troll Berserker. So we've had pillow fights. No, <laughs> we played, uh... Um... Mario Party. We did play Mario Party. I, I won. Yeah, I did not win. Um, I was... Yeah, I don't know. When I play Mario Party, I'm not super into it. I'm just kind of like, all right, I'll just roll these dice. We'll see what happens. I was dancing around. Oh, uh, this is a good splash. Um, yeah, we could also take the dual land. Like... I want less things that come into play tapped in this deck. Okay. Rather than more. Also, I think our two-drop slot is not great. It's not great right now, but it can always improve. Diehard bird? Yeah, like bird or this troll. No, not troll. It's not a troll. This berserker, this little dwarf. What's our three-drop slot in comparison? Fine. Mm -hmm. Die hard on the team with you. This combo trick is kind of interesting. Like it gets people because it's kind of bad. Nobody plays around it. <laughs> yeah, I think this card's good. <laughs> you can also take the snow covered planes because we do have a frostbite. So that's another option. Yeah, I think we're more likely to not play this. Okay. With, uh, you know, triple run amok, which I fully intend to have. Uh, we have got a Troll Berserker, or... So do we want this saga? A continued Black Splash. I just like the sagas. Like, these look great. Sagas are great. We need to take some duels, though. We've got two free sources right now. Seize the Spoils is another card that's good for splashing. It may not be great in an aggro deck, but... It's fine if you really need the fixing. We are in agreeance. You know, this angel has killed me more times than I care to admit, so, like, that thing's not awful as a top cur uh, curve topper. Yep, I agree with you. I will kill someone with a plow at some point this set. But it has crew six. How do you even Oxen, crew that the if ox. you don't have the ox? That's it. That's the only- that's It's only... a two-card combo. I'm just gonna draft this and two oxen. And then I will kill one person, then retire the deck, and live happy. Happily ever after. Okay, so I guess here's- a fun fact that is mostly true, but I'm probably going to be misremembering the story, honestly. That makes them better. Okay, great. All right, so we had this ox in the set. The ox never changed. It was, you know, the 06 for two mana, and it could crew vehicles with its toughness. Um, and it was someone on the design team early on put this in the set um, just because it was, like, really cool on flavor, right? Also, I don't care what you pick here. You can just pick whatever while I tell I'm, this story. I'm going to be really greedy and take this. Ooh, It's wow. double black, but there's really nothing else I care about. Like, bird and this thing, whatever. We might not run it, but I'm not excited about anything. Yeah, so. yeah, this, is, this seems good. All right, so anyway, I was... Oh, this dual land. Yeah, most likely. This seems very important for our double... <laughs> so there were no vehicles that this ox could crew so you know we kept drafting the set and like the play testers were like i don't understand why this ox is here when there's no vehicle that it can crew like i think we really need a crew six vehicle 
Um, finally, we decided to put in a Crew 6 vehicle into the set that would, like, work great with the ox, you know, like, and, like, what do oxes crew? Like, what do ox, what kind of vehicles would an ox, like, uh, walk around with, right? And it was like, oh, obviously this plow, right? So we decided to make a plow that had Crew 6 that would work with the ox. And it was a colorless vehicle, and it had, uh, like, it, it was, like, very similar, like, we changed it a little bit. And it had, um, when this attacked, you add GGG to your mana pool, because it's a plow, plows kind of feel green, right? And that was also weird, because the ox was white, and then uh, eventually we decided to make it uh, a, like a more of a white-based card instead. Anyway, that's the story. Hopefully it's, Third run it's a fun enough fact for you guys. Third run amok, double squash. Um... Another option is this Master Scald, because we do we have- took one. We already have one. Okay, cool. I did take one. I missed it. Otherwise, I would have probably just snapped it up. This guy's go good, right? Fine. Yeah, I took a one Master Scald for our stuff. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even hate picking up another one, but I thought, like, a, a removal spell is just better. Yeah, I want to crew someone. I want to kill someone with a plow. Hey, hello. Yeah, we don't have any... I have the wings. We, we ended up passing... A, we have a wings? Okay. We ended up passing the little one, so maybe that's not even good. Thing. Eh. At worst, it's a two-drop. It'll eat a removal spell because our opponents will be scared about it. More hulks. Here's the plow. Pickaxe is actually not terrible. And it splashes well. And it's actually pretty aggressive. It's overperformed for me, for sure. Two drops that throw away excess land. This is my favorite card in the set. He's so cute. It reminds me of Hammy with his treats. Fuck off, man. <laughs> Hey, look, now we can play him. Maybe now we can a play him. A pickaxe and a helm? That's pretty good. Uh, I did play in the open, yes. I did mediocre. Oh, wait, second Master Skeld or third Saga? Would we play? I don't think we'd play more of these. Yeah, I'm not sure we would either. So I don't even know if we would play the second one of these, honestly. But I want to hear about you guys. How did you do? Who day two'd? How far did you get? I three two'd day two. So not great. But my pool was like, not good. Yeah, it was not good. But hey, at least you got some gems. Oh, we're done with the draft. We're done. Oh, wow. I don't think we're playing the rune scar demon. Not rune scar. Hey, burning rune demon. Why are you ruining my fun? Okay, by all means, play the rune scar demon. <laughs> O3 drop and ordered pizza. We might order pizza. Mm. We gotta eat something. We didn't get nearly enough run amucks. I had to pass one at the end there for a squash. Oh no. But I felt it was correct. Fifty card special? Probably getting rid of some of these things. Yeah, get rid of this boat. We don't need any boats in this deck. No boats. Uh, Bird is, like, okay. I really like it with the pickaxe. Mm -hmm. And with all these run amucks. One, two, three, four, five. Five two drops and a one drop. Fine-ish. Sixteen. 17? I think 18? this is too many Master Scalds. Like, I think one is the maximum number of Master Scalds. I think it's kind of close. I would almost rather, because of three good sagas, I would almost rather cut the Flying Sword. I would normally agree with you, but I think, like, getting this back a second time is just kind of nuts. Absolutely. And we've got three good targets. Mm -hmm. So 
You like the sword more, though? I mean, we have to cut seven cards, so, I mean, honestly, we're probably, probably going to end up cutting that anyway. Uh, that's true. Like, you're probably going to cut... A two Seize drop. The spoilers. Uh, well, that's too bad, but but I I can see it. Like I like it for the mana fixing. But I guess you have a vault robber and the pickaxe. Also, if the vault robber is making treasure, you're not going to have a ton of creatures to remove for the master scald. Maybe we don't have anything else really that wants it. And if he just we kind of only need him for one, and that's only a possibility. And maybe with the pickaxe, we don't need him. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could cut him because we've got three free sources as is. Because we have the two duels and the pickaxe. That's kind of already a lot for two, not a lot, but a decent amount for two cards. And then you could just throw a swamp in and call it a day and get rid of the... Do we have a lot of berserkers? Uh, not a ton, I think. These mm -hmm. guys... Because like this Blood Sky Masker cares about berserkers. I was just curious. I don't think we do. One, two, itself is three. These Immerstrom Raiders, I think, are Berserkers. Four, five, six. That's a decent amount. Melissa D and Nerdy G. Nerdy G? I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> Please don't post that on the internet anywhere, because I don't think I want us our duo to be called that. <laughs> that's, that's a little too... Uh, to girl bandy? I don't know. Like our, our own salt and pepper kind of thing going on. <laughs> New album cover, ship it. <laughs> Shush. No. Hang on, I'm gonna shut the door for Hammy. What are your what are our cuts? Um one two drop, one master scald, probably. Right. Maybe something from the fours. Maybe a, a vault robber. I will say if we cut a two drop creature. And the Master of Scalds, we're going down to like 13 creatures, which is a tad low for this kind of It deck. is low, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess like well, maybe, maybe the Blood Sky Massacre is kind of like a creature. Yeah, the Blood Sky... I can see cutting a Squash, but I know that you really like that card. Uh, I could see cutting a Squash if we get rid of any of the um, Giants. Hmm? I think three is enough to where I want to run both Squashes, but if we cut any of them, then I think we could cut it. I don't know if we have enough for Basalt Ravager. Oh no. But he's a Flame Tongue Pavu. Yeah, I think maybe we have enough Berserkers to pull it off. I just worry he might come in for one too many times. Yeah, he might. Yeah, whenever I've had this card in like an aggressive deck like this, I had a ton of Berserkers and Dwarves and Warriors, and I never had any Giants or Wizards. So two Demons, two Dwarves. Berserker, Berserker, human, human, angel, warrior. So it looks like we have like three warriors, six berserkers. That's possible. Two dwarves, three giants. Does this guy? So it, it, what does this make? It makes just a berserker, a demon berserker. Okay, so three demons too, technically, because it's a demon. Yep, and a berserker. So there's some overlap. Is gold vein pick good? It actually is overperformed, uh, especially in a deck with a splash. Uh, it's very aggressive, works really well with this idiot. Works great with the battlefield raptor, too. Yep. It, it's honestly, it's been in a lot of seven decks, seven win decks that I would have not expected. All right, so the two drop, do you like cutting the robber or a raider better? Um, Master of Scalds. I guess the robber is the weaker of the two. Because we want to be attacking, we don't really want to be keeping one mana up to make a treasure. And we have, you know, with one swamp in the deck, we have four sources. I'm fine with that for two cards. Is it is Tormentor's Helm something to get rid of? The only reason why I like it is because of the coal, but it's only one card. Yeah. You know, if we don't draw the coal, the Tormentor's Helm is just kind of okay. And we have 15 creatures. I don't know with this kind of deck if we want to go right, too yeah, much I, lower. I guess we can get rid of the, the Helm. The other options, if we try to avoid creatures, is what? Frostbite, Pickaxe, um, Run Amok, <laughs> Sad. Uh, we could definitely cut a Squash. 
or the Divine Gambit. The Divine yeah. Gambit's more situational. Yeah, I guess uh, if we're trying to be a, a tempo aggressive deck, the Divine Gambit might be a little uh, risky to play. Still one card? Oh. No. Yeah, Yanks, I know you don't like the Divine Gambit. He was y Yanks is the one that did the co-op with me when we did the rating for cool stuff. Okay. And uh he was a low like I was already very medium on that card, not in love with it. I think so I think I've only ran it once. Um but he was even lower than that. Yep, yeah, I'm I tend to draft a lot more like mid-range and controly decks. And I I really like Divine Gambit, but it doesn't So I like, like I can see cutting it in this deck. In like my green white decks. Yeah, where you're light on removal and your deck is going to the longer, you know, games anyway, and you're both kind of top decking like Linda's, and then it, Linda. feel, it feels pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, one more thing. Cut a swamp. We're not going to worry about the mana base until after we decide what we're going to play, right? Otherwise, you have to go in, fix your lands, and then you go back and you cut something, and you're like, okay, now my land ratio is off. So right now it's just auto-filled lands, and we leave it until you decide what your 26, 23 is, whatever. I can see cutting a squash. Yeah, it makes it a little bit lighter on removal than I'd like, but I think the run amucks kind of count as removal for us. If, yeah. we're, if, we, you know, if we play them cautiously and, and well. Oh, yeah, we have one vote for 16 lands. That's what the cut is. In best of one with the hand smoother, I'm not entirely opposed with it because we have three giants, so these are probably like in the middle somewhere. Yeah, we can try it. So if we oh, plus we have gold vein pick. Yeah. So what does that make? We do it? have a lot of four drops, so I don't know. I I, I mean, you also move some uh, squashes down to the four drop, so it's a little misleading, but yeah. I was thinking like of an average, right? Sometimes they're this, sometimes they're this. They're kind of here-ish. Yeah. Um, the sagas, you know, aren't really fours. This is potentially even a two or three or just played later with like another two or three. Yeah. And you also have Immersum Raider to like find lands if you really need to. Yep. In best of one, it's like a little easier to cut, I think. Mm -hmm. So this would be I agree. give us what? Seven sources... Four, five, six, seven sources. Yeah, it's a little light, but there's, like, what can you do? We're playing three colors. It's eight red and four, five, six, seven white. Looks like we do have more red than white. By a lot, By a actually. lot, yeah. So this seems about right. Yeah, let's kill some people. If we, I think if we get pickaxe out and get in just like a single hit with it, then it'll definitely compensate for any land issues. All right, are we ready to kill people? Kill people? Goodness gracious. Can I get you anything to drink? Um, I have my cold brew here, so I'm good for now. And I also have a water for later. Okay. So I'm good for now, but thank you. Thank you for the use of this jellyfish mug. It's adorable. It is quite cute. This looks fine. Yep, we're probably just pitching the Battlefield Raptor on turn two with this raider, is my guess. Probably. Unless we draw something sweet. This should have just been a planes. Oh, we're on the free-to-play account. Wizards didn't, like, uh, set up the streamer perks. So what's the deal with your accounts? You have a free-to-play account and you have one account that you spend money on? Yep. Okay. Dang it, I was even contemplating pitching one of these. I almost pitched a mountain, but I was like, no, I really want to ensure I can play this Cavern Hulk. Raven Hulk, whatever. Yeah. Raven Hulk, Cavern Hulk. Close enough. A giant coward. It doesn't even look like anything. It looks like a mountain with it a, does. a goat but you on can, it. You can kind of see his hand. Like Where? You can see, like, here's a hand. Oh, is here's it? Here's another hand. It, it just But kinda... yeah, he does look like a big rock. 
Is in there like with a goat on top. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Our opponent just foretold twice. Foretold twice. Yeah, turn two and turn four, it looks like. Well, if this survives, then Basalt Ravager is going to be able to deal two damage, which is nice. To the Ponytail. He's hiding behind the mountain. So that you're right, then. If, if that's the case, then these are his, his claws. And then maybe this is his face. He's just like, he's made of rock. Mm hmm Like, chained to the rocks. Isn't that... Chained to the rocks is a, is a Theros card that yeah. you can put on a mountain. But the picture is just like a dude. Yeah, it might be a giant. I don't actually know what it is. It's probably a dude, actually. He's like a legit chain to a rock. I don't remember what it does. It's like an Oblivion Ring or a Journey to Nowhere style card. I hope we get to kill something large with squash and then run amok and kill more things. Our opponent is like, what's going on here? Like, discard a white card, have mountains and swamps in play. We're telling more cards? Jiminy Christmas. What could it be? Thought coming? Mm. Okay. <clears throat> I want to get rid of this mountain. Yeah, I don't think we need another mountain. And now we can be safe with our, uh, like, with the Basalt Ravager. I don't think there's any way that we get blown out here. Agreed. Do you want to just kill this or the pony? Oh, I think the pony. And we can just attack with the Craven Hulk. There's a stick. I think they might have plus... Oh, well, they probably have five damage to a tapped creature, because they can always target their creature, right? That's true. Yep. Or they've got plus one, plus three. They could have plus one, plus three. Which is a bad card, and they, they should not be have playing it. it. Well, okay. no, that card's fine. Imagine if they had a plus one, plus three. We would be totally blown out here. We wouldn't even be able to attack, Maybe. Maybe. Are we okay to trade this? No, I think next turn we can just run amok and we just attack with just, just a 4-4. Four, four. The 4-4 four, four dies to the 5-5 five, five, for the 5 damage. We're fine with that. Yeah, that is true. We could always like... Wait and then run amok in response. Yeah, we could do that. I mean, they obviously have it. I just... Eh. It's very hard to play around that card. Yeah, I think we wait. All right. I'm even down to hold this. Mm -hmm. We're playing magic, man. This isn't a dating game. Mm -hmm. I don't even like gifts. Also, wasn't Valentine's Day, like, weeks ago? Yep. Sounds like someone's girlfriend's very angry. If he forgot and he's just now trying to figure out what to get. Mm-hmm. Hey, oh, I did the right thing! All right, I guess also goodbye bound in gold. Yep. Sounds right. Don't have another one, yeah? Come on. Don't do it. Don't do it. Ah, we knew they were going to do that. When we have seven white sources in the deck? Yep. Attack them. Okay, let's see what they do here. I'm guessing they block this and then... Yeah, they block that. We do nothing. And then they and then kill they, Craven Hulk. Yeah, they'll try and do, do five to Craven Hulk. If they try and do five to Basalt Ravager, there's not really a ton we can do about it. No, and I'm okay with that. Basalt Ravager already did its job. And then we just kill whatever they play. Just like Perfect. we planned. This is a lot of damage. 
It is a fair amount indeed. Play something. Let me squish it. Who needs white mana? Did you and Melissa get to do any fun activities? I know we're still in quarantine. We did eat. Yeah, eating is something that we have to do to live. Should we so. squish it? In case we draw something else for Droppy? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. It feels like such a waste though, doesn't it? It does. But I feel like we're gonna maybe wanna play something. And then we won't be able to squish it. Did I work on Strixhaven? I was not on the set team, but I always work on the limited and standard formats, regardless of if I'm on the team or not. So, can I say anything about it? I can't say anything other than what was already said, unfortunately. Do we make them have it? Yeah, make them have it. So let's... Backers and squish it. And we I was wrong. We didn't draw something I needed to cast, so... Such is life. Oh! Okay, great. Hey, that's They still fine. have to chump block. Yeah, that's, that's fine. They're still in lots of trouble. How many hours of playtesting? That's, it's really hard to quantify. Like, I work eight hours a day, five days a week, and we do a lot of playtesting. But it's really hard to say how many hours of playtesting for a given set, you know? And then also, however many hours I play playtest, there's also, like, other people who playtest as well, so... Also, I imagine, like, it depends, like, someone might play test a crap ton for a specific set and then not at all for, like, you know, you don't work on a set necessarily from start to finish. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, right? So, kind of hard to say, like, how much playtesting goes into it. Definitely. You're dead. Do you use AI to playtest sets? Nope, we just use our good old-fashioned brains. Just humans. Um, play design does help decide what cards get printed for the Mystical Archive, but generally that is the, uh, the, the set team. But, you know, we might, like, play test the set or, like, draft the set and be like, oh, hey, uh, you know, this card is really unfun and limited. Maybe it should be something else. Or, or hey, this, we think this card will be, uh, like a popular standard card. Maybe this should be in here, you know? So, we do have input. Oh, I have a question. Anything... And you don't have to, you know, any, have you personally any thoughts on ways to interact with emblems? Oh, do I have thoughts? Um, Ooh. personally, I do like having a way to interact with emblems because I just like there to be interaction for everything, right? Well. Ooh, no, it's not going well. Yeah, those first two hands were kind of crap, huh? Mulligan to five. Yep. In best of one. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, I can see putting the quash back, the squash back, too, because we're not casting it until turn five, and if we draw a white source, we can play a creature. The saga is not playable unless we have a creature also. We might draw a giant. We might draw a giant, yeah. Yeah, you But you need a creature for the saga to do anything, really. Yeah, hopefully we draw one. Most of our deck is red. It's overwhelmingly red. Hey, this one. That was a great draw. It was a great draw. And we draw a card to make up for some of our loss. Oh, don't don't count. Oh, you can't count it. Excellent. Yeah, like a null is in the set, right? Like, so technically they could have it, but it's pretty unlikely that they played a null in their deck, I think. Yeah, there's the foretell one for two, um, but they don't have any foretelled cards. Do 
You don't like the idea because they were never meant to be interacted with. Says who? Yeah, like, I don't even know if that's true, honestly. Like, they, like... Yeah, I, I don't know. Is it normal to change a card rarity when playtesting for limited? We change card rarities when playtesting for limited, yes. Like, I don't know if you just got here or not, but I was uh, talking earlier about the showdown of the Scalds. That card wasn't uncommon before. This is we don't lose, right? Is that the way that works? Um, should we pew pew this? Should we attack first and make them tap their snow mana to uh, tap one of our things, maybe? Also, did we play a land yet? Yeah, I want to say no, because we did not play a land. Oh, what does our last chapter of the saga do, by the way? Gives us this mana. Oh, we have mana. Does it empty? Um... Not. Uh, it does at the end of turn, but oh, not okay, at the end of okay. phase. So we have some time to decide what to do with this then. Okay. Well, I think we should go to combat first and see what they... Oh, they didn't tap anything. Or I guess they haven't decided they, yeah, yet. Yeah, they, they, we just went into combat. All right. This has menace, so it's fine. I like pew pewing this. Yeah, do we want to sacrifice the Immerstrom Raider? Ooh. We could also play both of these and wait a turn, and then pew pew it next turn with this. Um, we could, but I mean, I think playing a two drop and a four drop seems good here. Like, I'd probably do, like, Raider, and then sacrifice the Raider. Do we, you want to discard anything? I don't think so. Like, what are we trying to draw? A land? Not really. Pew pew! And then, if we draw a land, we don't need much more than this. We can always pitch it. Each player discards a card. That's kind of poopy. Oh, a snowman! That was nice of him to tap I this. I always called snow creatures snowmen, too. It's a snowman. Each player discards a card. Well, what are we going to return here with this uh, reanimation? Yeah, we don't want to return this. We could just pitch the angel and play both of these things, potentially. Yep. And then bring angel back. I mean, well, I don't know why he tapped this down when this he can't block. Yeah, I'm not sure either. He's clearly playing around our run amok. Quite possibly. Don't pitch the angel. The back side is good. Yeah, we kind of like the front side, though. Front side's good, too. They're attacking? Oh, no. This is not a good sign. Oh, they just had another one. Okay, fair enough. We do not have enough mana to do both of these things. Right. Yeah, I think we just want to attack and run amok. Agreed. Oh, this has haste too. Yep. Great. And then we can suit this up next turn and be very happy about it. I shouldn't have attacked with that guy. Big mistake. They do have a lot of things. Oh, a squish. Oh, uh, they can tap this. Wonder which they will tap. They've been tapping this, so we can't do anything. So I think we do this and see what happens. Now they'll just tap that. Maybe. Maybe we should have put it on something else. 
so they're more incentivized to tap another thing, and then we can get in there with the menace creature. Yeah, I was trying to make a mana, and they've been tapping this to prevent us from using it. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right, well, maybe we can just move it back to something else now. Yeah. Put it on this. We can get back our... Blood Sky Massacre, yep. maybe? coffee invasion of the giants this card has not impressed me i didn't see how they scroll oh, oh two bottom okay sounds fine yeah that's nice okay so they'll probably tap the four three here which then we I, can get in there with the two three yeah which i'm fine with now mm -hmm. we drew a land yep. and we just attack them here and then we play this. What's my favorite thing about Strixhaven? I don't need to be specific. I think the Elder Dragons are sweet. If you could remove one keyword from magic, what would it be? Oh, geez. I don't know. Um, remove? That's a tough one. Should we just squish this? I'm assuming they want to block and tap one and have a removal spell. All right. What are they up to? They're going to tap something, block okay. something. Probably remove something. Yep. I think I just want to squish this. Wish you. Hexproof is a good answer. Hexproof seems to be everybody's favorite answer when it comes to that. In limited, I don't mind it. Yeah, I mean, like, it depends. Um, like I, I like hexproof and protection and indestructible, like a lot of these things that are being mentioned here, um, when it's used sparingly. And I also really like them on combat tricks. Like, like one card that I think is really cool from Call Time is the Snakeskin Veil. Because it's like a one mana protect your creature type deal. But like when you have a cheap creature with hexproof that your opponent can't do anything about and it's just permanent hexproof, that can be pretty frustrating. Wasn't this a mold of five? Uh, it was actually, yeah. Sweet. That's because sagas give card advantage. Welcome, welcome, Caleb. So we got a huge raid, guys, from Caleb. Oh, uh, nice. Thanks, well, Caleb. One of my old uh, teammates from Tempo Storm. So welcome, guys. Thank you so much. My viewers, you guys all know who he is. Click the link. Go show him some love. Give him a follow. I'd appreciate it. Uh, for those of you guys who are just joining us, my friend Melissa here is uh, visiting me for the weekend, so I took the weekend off stream. But we decided to fire up a draft and just kind of hang out for a couple hours. Melissa volunteered to answer some questions. Uh, don't ask anything annoying that you know she can't answer because... I can answer some questions, maybe even most questions. Yeah, but just don't be annoying. Yeah, like, if I don't answer your question... It means I'm probably ignoring you. Not going to answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> CPs have a good night, hun. So yeah, we're just kind of running a draft, guys. We're currently two zero with a uh, forced Boros beats deck. We got some double run amok action. I know it'll make one of my viewers very angry. <laughs> we just won a mold five. What is your favorite cube? Hmm. What is my favorite cube? There are not many answers to this question. There are not that many cubes, right? Booze cube! I've never played it. You just get really fucked up. <laughs> but what cube do you play? Is it... Oh, is it like a custom cube where people just made custom cards that reference alcohol? Drinking, yeah. Various forms of drinking. It's a real thing. All right. How, how much do I care about playing this bird on turn? I think I do want to play this bird on yeah, turn. Yeah, I think you do. And then we go. Like we don't really have a ton to do. And then we go tap over land, the next few untap turns. land. 
It means um, we can't shock. But... Anyway, I'm trying to answer the cube question. I didn't actually give an answer. I do like the vintage cube. Hey! I do want to shock that. I do not want you to ramp, Sam I am. So I'm seeing a lot of questions here that I'm just not going to answer. Like, basically anything that talks about the future, or, or my thoughts about just anything that could happen in the future, I just can't really talk about. It's more like personal preference, guys. What was your favorite card to work on? That's okay. Oh yeah, that's- In a particular Something like that set. is totally fine, but something like, what card should I- do I want unbanned, and what card do I want banned? Like, that's not really something that I can talk about. Man, their deck seems good. Look at double snow land, two sculptors already? I'm scared. I'm going to sack this creature, though, and kill it, and it's going to be great. How do you feel about Boros Reckoner? That card is so old. Oh, that's a Gatecrash card. I liked it in, in Gatecrash. What are the chances I can attack with this, and they'll block with the Mistwalker, and we can kill that? Oh, sorry. I was looking at the chat, so I didn't really get- I didn't see a lot of what was going on, so... How, how badly do I want to stop them from getting to six? Oh, I see. Um, I don't see a huge downside in playing this four mana saga here, because... Well, I was thinking about attacking pre-combat. We can maybe kill the Mistwalker. Yeah, you can maybe kill that, sure. Um, yeah, like, it's a very easy block for them. Agreed. Now a combat trick. Hmm? I didn't or, think there would oh, be much of a con. Oh, they're, they're just making it a 2-3. So we're, we're just losing our creature. We'll get him back. You have a pet card. Good question. Why did you change CMC to mana value? That was mostly to just save space on cards, and also converted mana cost is a very confusing term. Like, what are you converting? So mana value we just thought was a little bit easier to understand and explain, and also is uh, less words, less characters on cards. Don't fight, don't fight. Well, even if they fight, I guess we just get it back. Did MDFCs get annoying to test with in paper? Yes. <laughs> Very annoying to test with in paper. Especially like, you know, once you get many sets worth of MDFCs, right? Yeah, there was... Yeah, definitely uh, different from like you guys who you have a card with a front and back. For us, it was like we had to print out our um, our MDFCs and the backsides too. Always pretty annoying. I shouldn't play this. Do I stream or make magic videos? I actually don't anymore. Um, I used to stream before COVID. I used to stream once a week um, as part of uh, Wizards with Paul Chion. Then when COVID happened, uh, we stopped. And it's really hard to get the stream to work logistically anymore because, like, we're both streaming from home and we always have technical difficulties. And plus, like, I also feel like we just do more work now at home and it's just harder to just make time for a stream. So that's on a permanent hiatus. How long does it take to design a new set? How far in advance are sets being developed? So they're really far in advance. Um, they usually start getting worked on like from scratch about four or five years before. And even before that, like teams like the world building team, um, they're like doing initial design of like, what world do we want to go to next? You know, so that kind of stuff is being done way, way in advance. But as far as when does any design get done, probably about three to four years ago. For my team, we usually work on the sets about a year to a year and a half in advance.
they didn't uh, foretell, so I'm not envisioning a pump spell here. So I think this is fine. I don't know, though. We're gonna find out. What's the deal with the run amok? Is that from the that's from the showdown yeah, of the skulls? We're gonna lose it. We, we drew. Uh, okay. It was this guy and this. Okay. And I decided to play the two threes, and then we top decked the bind and gold, which I wanted to cast this turn, but I figured we could wait and cast it now. These are great cards. See, look how good this is gonna work with our. Oh yeah, this is gonna be amazing. It's amazing. I'm just gonna play this for now, and then play the other guy next turn. Can we just kill them. How much design space does double face cards have over split cards? I would say a decent amount, just because of the amount of space you can write on a full card as opposed to uh, a split card. Like, if you look at a split card, you can't fit a lot of text on there. So just the fact that, like, you actually get two sides of a card uh, to work with, like, you just get a lot more options. Base power. So he just becomes a... Five powered creature. I haven't been paying too much attention to what. That's the way this works, right? What's, what's going on? Are you asking about Arnie Brokenbrow? He's just one plus the highest number, right? So it becomes five. We can't. Yes. Uh, we're not attacking into Linda. Yeah. Yep. Oh, but you get to draw a card. Sweet. There's a berserker attacked. Oh, they're dying. They are dying. They think that they're dead. They said good game, so. <laughs> What would I do if I weren't working for Watsy? I don't know. Before Watsy, I was just playing Magic all day, so would I still be doing that? I'm not really sure. Nerd Girl, thoughts on pineapple on pizza? Pineapple pepperoni's pretty tasty. You want to fight? Not really. Okay. I'm fine with pineapple. I don't have anything against pineapple. Like, I know that it's a very controversial thing. Like, some people are like, oh my god, pineapple is the worst and you're a terrible person. And the other side is pineapple is the best. No. And, and I'm just like, pineapple's fine. I usually won't order a pineapple pizza, but if it's there, I'll eat it. I don't like it on every pizza. I don't like it all the time. But a pineapple pepperoni is pretty good. A little sweet, a yeah, little tangy. Yeah, exactly. You get, you get the mix of, uh, of sweet and savory. Pineapple uh, Canadian bacon or ham is not, is overrated, I think. But this is a slow hand, but we have both of our colors. Both of our colors. Our main colors. Both of our, yes, that is true. Hey, oh, thank you. Some elf, I appreciate the sub love. Are you partaking in drinks? Uh, I was thinking about maybe mar making us a margarita later. Well, yeah, it's pretty early right now. Like, it's only four o'clock. And we did most of our drinking Friday night mm -hmm. when Melissa got here. We drank, I drank a fair amount. <laughs> I would say that I drank a fair amount, too. I don't really drink a lot, and I drank more than I usually do. I made good margaritas. They were very good. They were much better than the margaritas from the restaurant we went to the next day. I make a mean Cadillac. Like, a Sika's Chariot? That's a Cadillac. It is a Cadillac, yep. That's a great name for a card. Cat-a-lac. <laughs> it makes me giggle. What hobbies do I have outside magic? That's a great, excellent question. Thank you for asking. So one of my hobbies is uh, I like to play dance games. I have uh, two arcade cabinets at my house. I have a Pump It Up and a DDR. I'm more of a Pump It Up person myself. And uh, since COVID started, I started streaming Pump It Up with my roommate on my roommate's account, not on my own account. And that's been really fun. Are there any restaurants I miss? Uh, yeah, I mean, there are lots of restaurants I miss. I miss Spice King. That's a great Indian restaurant right by Wizards that I used to go to like once a week or something. And now I, I have not been since COVID happened. 
link to that account um i can give the link to the account can i can we i can probably send it on my phone actually Yeah, um, actually, we usually stream on Sundays and Thursdays. Obviously not this Sunday, because I'm here this weekend, but we do plan on streaming Thursday, and I usually post on Twitter when we go live. And I will send the, the account in the chat right now. Hmm. What am I going to do with you, Ice Shaper? I kind of want to lock down this ice shaper. Oh, sorry. I'm not paying a ton of attention to your games, That's but, okay. but I am very confident that you're going to do awesome. To be fair, I'm also not paying a ton of attention to my games. so <laughs> That's fair. No plans to stream on your own account. Well, the thing is, like, my roommate has been streaming dance games already, so when I started joining him, um, I just... We just use his account. Also, like, streaming, f like, with someone who is already streaming is kind of fun because you get, like, a little bit more interaction. Uh, whereas, like, if, hypothetically, Melissa has no intention of streaming more than, like, you know, once a month, then there would be less people that would know about it, potentially. So maybe, maybe less fun. Yeah, like, he was streaming DDR before he moved in with me. Um... And then when he moved in, like, so I, I already had the Pump It Up machine at, at my place, and when he moved in, his DDR came with him. So then we just started streaming Pump It Up, and since he already was streaming, you know, we just continued using, using his account. I think I might be able to trick them here. Awesome. Have I been on Drive to Work podcasts? I have, actually. I've been on four of his podcasts, and they were years ago. But if you search his podcasts for my name, you can probably find them all. I thought they might double block and I'd be able to get them with the bite. I probably should have just bit end of turn with the open mana and then ravagered. But I was trying to be greedy. I wanted the two for one. And then they didn't give it to me, and I'm sad. All right, so tell me, what is the fav your favorite card that you've ever helped make? Oh, wow. It's I'll, hard to pick a favorite, honestly. I um, like to bring the hard questions. That is a really hard question. Like, another th like so first, taking a step back, um, it's really hard to remember what cards that I mostly designed because for a few reasons. One, cards change so much over time. And two... These cards were made, like, well over a year ago, and, like, I'm working so far ahead that it's kind of hard to just, like, go back and be like, I think I designed this one, but I don't remember, and, you know, I don't want to take credit for something that someone else designed, you know? But there yeah. were a bunch of cards from Theros Beyond Death that I designed, because I was on that team, and I helped make a lot of cards for, like, a potential Enchantress-style deck. So, for example, the, uh, the Alcide, you know, the one-mana lifelink was one. Um, the, actually, uh, a popular one, uh, the Dryad, the one that you can play an additional land and also your lands produce any color mana. Um, another one was, the thing is I don't remember a lot of names, so I'm gonna be very bad at describing what, what the cards are, but the giant of, uh, whenever it attacks, you can either have them take three or you can, like, play the, one of the top two cards of your deck. Holy smokes. Uh, real quick, guys, I wanted to special shout out to Yanks with a huge $100 donation and Fade Out gifting 10 subs to the channel. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate the support. Very awesome. We're also 4 0. That's amazing. Hey, wow. we're going to be done soon. We're going to have to play another game soon. 
I'm gonna watch you fall off on Fall Guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll give her the Fall Guys controller and make margaritas. It's still so early. It'll be five o'clock by the time we're done. Give or take. Geek! Gifting 10 more subs. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's amazing. We got some gem draws coming. Well, maybe I'll let you do the honors. Gem draws are great. I don't know what that means, but okay. They get special stuff for subscribing. Okay. Also, wow, I can't believe Caleb hosted us this early. Isn't he? He, usually, yeah, he, he streams usually later streams than me. Way later. Yeah, he usually stops streaming around like midnight or so Pacific time. I watch Caleb a lot. Tang, thank you so much. Is this three? Thank you. He was doing Sealed Arena Day 2. That makes sense. And the MTGO Sealed event. I didn't know uh, MTGO had a sealed event. I didn't either. But I did see that Caleb was streaming an MTGO sealed event, and I was like, what is this? Yeah, I didn't know. It's some kind of qualifier. The deep sadness and grief of the death of Slow Bad Goblin Tinker? Tinker? Yeah, that's a card. Um, I didn't know he died. That's unfortunate. But I do remember that card. I'm gonna lose this. I have a feeling. Well, um, have I ever designed a card that never changed? I'd have to, like, really go back and think about that, but... I would say it's pretty rare for a card to never change. Because something usually changes. Like, if it's a common, it usually changes something about it for limited. Because it's pretty rare to get a card exactly how you want it for limited right off the bat, you know? Because, like, we play tests over, you know, many months. So, that's pretty rare. Um, and yeah, rares change all the time too during playtesting, so it's like really rare for a card to change. But let me try and think of an example of a card that has never changed. I had one. I'm sure something from Eldraine never changed. Well, even something like Opt can change. Like, sometimes we'll have, you know, a generic blue limited card, and then we say, oh, we want Opt in Standard, and then we cut a card to make room for Opt. So that slot changed. It changed from from something else to Opt, right? And there, there's also vice versa where, like, maybe we don't want Opt in Standard, and we cut Opt from the set. I have a kind of question. I know you guys don't do a lot with art, mm -hmm. um, but in a set like Eldraine, where it was very storyline oriented, where did and your your creation of the card and what it does have so much flavor, like that's kind of dealing with the art, right? Like Trail of Crumbs. Oh so, yeah. So like you're you're putting in some effort to make it look like a, an artsy thing. Right? Yeah, so that's not really art. That's more like they're called top-down designs where like you take a an idea or like a trope and we design around that. So for example, Trail of Crumbs, um, basically like what happens is like, all right, we're doing a fairy tale set. Let's try and brainstorm a whole bunch of fairy tale ideas that we can make cards out of, right? Um, so a lot of things like bake into a pie, Trail of Crumbs, uh, Hansel and Gretel, Little Mermaid, like, tons of stuff like that. We just, like, get all those ideas out, and then we try and design cards for them, you know? Art comes a lot later, but, like, so, for example, like, with Trail of Crumbs, there was a card called Trail of Crumbs, and the artist decided to do, you know, whatever the art looks like. Just some kids and some, a trail and some crumbs, right? But, but, yeah, um, we do, like, for top-down sets, like Throne of Eldraine, we think of the ideas first and then design the cards. But art still always comes later. Did yeah. we die? Yeah. I okay. thought more along the lines of like... In a lot of sets, like you make... You make a card and what the artist chooses to uh, represent it as. Like you make, you know... A 4-4 four, four flying sphinx. 
Mm -hmm. If it's a sphinx that doesn't have like any, you know, it's it's a rare creature type. So if, hypothetically, if they were to change it to a mouse, it wouldn't actually change much of the gameplay within the set. So like you can design cards without having to think a whole lot about what it will actually look like in the art. Versus that's correct. Yep. Yeah. Versus like Little Mermaid, if you want to include it, you're actually needing to make it, a, a you know, a merfolk and yeah. The artists have less freedom with their what they choose to make the card you design, right? Um, yes and no. Like, uh, this is, I guess, getting, like, this might be a very long explanation, so let me try and see if I can figure out how I want to go about explaining this. Um, but, like, so, for example, like, with your Sphinx example, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so let's say that we have this blue creature, it has flying, um, and it does, I don't know, it draws cards or something. So that's, that's our card. Um, and then... At some point, the art director writes a little art description for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like, okay, so the design team made this card. It's a blue creature. It has flying and it draws cards. Let's make it a sphinx. Okay? Um, then it has an art description. And, and then they send the art out to be commissioned. They, like, they're like, okay, hey, artist, here's the art description. Please do this art. Once that happens, now we have a lot less freedom to change the card into something else. Because we already know that it's a blue sphinx with flying. So we can't remove flying it's the sphinx it has flying you know um we can't make it like very small because sphinxes are generally big you know so once the card has art assigned to it and like an art description we have a lot less freedom of what we can change about it like we can change like some numbers some cast and costs maybe some abilities and stuff but but like some things about the card would be locked in that makes sense like we can't make it a mouse like you were saying you know and then for your other example, which was, uh, like, the Little Mermaid card, which is, uh, the Eldraine card that starts, it's like a two-mana three-two, and then you can make it attack or something, as though it didn't have Defender. Uh, I don't know, at some point, like, that card has an art description as well, and, uh, we do have to kind of be true to the art and, like, not really, like, we can't make it a crab, right? Like, it's a merfolk. Yeah. I just meant it still seems like even with the way you're describing it, you kind of design a card and then the art description gets written. Whereas with an Eldraine, that it, is correct, it yeah. almost feels like you are designing cards with a art in mind. Yeah, usually, yeah. Like for, for top-down sets, like uh, someone in the chat was talking about top-down sets, like a set where, like in Estrad, where like this is a um, gothic horror set. We have all these like horror tropes, like zombies and werewolves and skeletons and stuff. Usually you uh, start out with an idea and then you design a card based around that idea, you know? So, yeah, for Eldraine, that was a top-down set, so we have all these, like, fairy tale tropes and we design to those. Um, and then other sets, like, like Call Time, this was more of a, we're designing cards and then the artists write the art descriptions later. Well, not the artists, the art directors, rather. I don't know if I played a land or not. I hope I didn't. I have no idea what turn I'm on. Yeah. I have never heard of untap.in. Order, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Sample, thank you for the gifted subs, guys. Really appreciate the support. I owe you guys some gem draws for sure. Oh, let's let's do this first. We didn't draw black mana. We have not drawn black mana, and it makes me sad. What is my opinion on Eldrin in terms of raw strength? Was it planned? Um, so we did plan on upping the power level of standard over time, starting with Guilds of Ravnica. Um, Eldrin did have a couple of cards that we were not happy with the power level of. Um, a lot of those cards are pretty obvious to you guys, uh, because they may have been banned or uh, talked about uh, amongst the community, that kind of thing. But, like, we are happy with a lot of its strength, and you will see cards that powerful going forward, as you already have, because there's been a, over a year's worth of cards since then. But the cards that we missed on the power level of, yeah, we are you know, trying to do that less, of course. Who does Hammy like more, Melissa or Nerd Mom? Nerd Mom! Well, that's a shame. 
But that's okay. But Hammy still likes Melissa more than me. Well, that sucks. But you're new. That's part of it. Yeah, exactly. If I was around all the time, I'm sure Hammy would not care about me. We have our two black cards, and I don't like it. Do we have ways to gain treasure? We have the pickaxe. We have the pickaxe and two free black sources and one swamp. So four sources total. Okay. Do you, have you ever designed a card that became banned? Well, I work on standard, so any card that was banned at standard, I did help work on, yes. Whether or not I designed them, I guess we like that's more of like an individual card by card question. Thanks, Mark Chalice. Overall, we are happy with how Eldraine um, turned out. Uh, there were some cards about, like, there were some aspects that were a little bit more powerful than we would have liked, but overall, we were happy with the set. Do I like top-down design sets? Does the limitations inspire or restrict? That's a really good question. Um, it like kind of depends on what we're working on specifically. Like with limited, top-down set sets are really difficult to work on, like because you have to just really be true to the source material. So like, for example, like with D and D, right, which is a set coming out pretty soon, like. If we had a card that is a character in D&D, &D, like a monster or something, and we're like, oh, for limited, we really want this particular card to do this. It's like, oh, no, it can't because this is based on this guy, you know? So there's a lot of that with the, uh, the top-down sets. So. Five wins? I didn't really answer your question, I don't think. Like, um, top-down sets, I think, are a lot harder for my team to work on. But I do like them. Five wins! Yeah, and we can still afford one loss still. Great. When is my favorite school or house from Strixhaven? Let's see. I would like you to create more crabs. Okay. That is what all. What is my favorite? Let's see. Someone's be like, Melissa, why why did you suggest that this is a crab? No reason. <laughs> hey oh, thank you so much. Admiral, thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate the sub. Um, I think my answer is the blue-green school, which is uh Quandrix. It's the Matthew school. Will White ever get card draw? Well, I suggest that you go watch a video that Gavin Verhey made on his channel, which, uh, let me think, uh, Good Morning Magic, about White uh, card draw. It's, it is on YouTube. I'm sure you can find it. This looks like some card draw. That card is White, and it draws cards. What's your favorite house from Strixhaven? Do you know what the houses are? Nope. Okay. I have not looked at anything. When was the last time I worked on Strixhaven? We worked on it a year ago. We usually finish up the sets like about a year to about like 10 months before it releases. So when COVID started, we were working on Strixhaven. We started working from home. I'm very confused if they block that. <laughs> hmm. Our opponent has a gigantic 4-5. What are we doing about that? Drawing a land, probably? Yeah. I imagine... I don't know what this is, to be honest. They just wanted to hit us for 4, I guess. Not a land. No. 
four, five, six, seven, but that's okay-ish. We're gonna we're gonna hit a land here. We did hit a land. Are we dying? I don't think we're dying. They have no snow lands. And if they alpha me, we might be able to kill them. This is not getting trample, right? No, it's, mm -mm. so it just trades. Which I am also okay with. Yep. At least next turn we can uh, kill their creature with the squash. We can also do Cravenhold plus squash, which is really nice. Okay, fair enough. They're gonna get a 1-1, one -one, but they have no cards left. Thank you so much. I appreciate the first time Prime, Green Knight. We lose out on this thing, but that is fine. And they, okay. they are certainly still on a shorter clock than us. Oh, uh, maybe not. Well, we have Run Amok and this thing. Plus this thing. It's probably fine. Can we kill them? We can probably kill them. Uh, five. Like six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One more spell. We don't have one more spell. We're so we're dying. Not yet. They have to have a pump spell. Yeah, they have to have a pump spell. But like, I always just think they have it. We're off by one mana. That's so sad. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we probably just want to just uh, improve our board here since we can't kill them. Off by one mana. But will they kill us? Hold! Hold! Oh, they're dead. Do, 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 do. Die! Oh, they have removal. They do. But they're still dead. They can't play around run amok. Correct. I kill you till you're dead. <laughs> they have died. That was a good last card for them. They were still going to let, let us keep this, but then they were going to have a 1-1, one, one, and then we'd still have this, this board. They'd go to 1. We were in a, a still a very good spot. Okay, guys, are you guys ready for the final boss? Hmm? Oh, now let's, let's, let's start with this one. What a sweet deck. Am I a better player than Shion? I have no idea. Are you a better player than Shion? I'm horrible at magic. Okay. I claim to be a better player than nobody. My mother, probably. I probably beat Nerd Mom. Like, okay. you know, at least two out of three. All right, I see a pickaxe and I see a bunch of cards we can't cast so well, but maybe the pickaxe will be good enough. Yeah. With this three mana card. And most of our deck is red. What is my favorite recent mechanic? I like adventure. How about you? What's your favorite recent mechanic? Is this the boss music? Yeah. Oh, it's the Blood Sky Massacre. If only we had more Berserkers.
Very nice. I'm going to kill them. You're a boy, can you be here? I don't see why not. Die hard bird. You are super dead. We have so much mana. I wonder if we should play Showdown of the Scalds. I was thinking about it. Because you can do Showdown of the Scalds, and if you hit a Plains, then you can play this other thing. But I can also see playing Cole plus the other Saga as well. That's what I, my original plan was, but they're so far behind. Mm -hmm. That, like, I don't know what they can exactly do. We did not draw land, but... We have a land but, here. But we can still play some stuff. And I'll Probably just play this. And this run amok is super awkward for them, too. Like, the fact that they know it's there, right? That's true, actually. Maybe we should just attack with everything and mm -hmm. run amok. And if they don't block, uh, we just play the two drop. Call yep. it a day. And since they're taking it, we have an extra treasure to play even another, a different card, like the Hulk, maybe? Yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, or maybe, even maybe we play thing. The, this thing and kill the lifelinker. Sure. Right? Because we definitely have two berserkers. Girls rule, boys drool. Oh my goodness. Look at all of this stuff. You are dead, my friend. The opponent has died. What we are masters. Death. On the free to play count. Flat three on the free to play is not too shabby. I'll take it. This was a fun deck, guys. Yeah. Take a screenshot for the Discord for those of you guys who are interested in seeing the seven win decks. We went seven one. We mulled the five a bunch. The mana base was kind of awkward, but it was certainly a fun deck to play. I'd like to give a special thank you to those of you who have signed up for our Patreon. I couldn't make this content without you. Also to Cool Stuff Inc. and KMC Sleeves for supporting the channel as well. Definitely check them out and use our discount codes to support the channel.